Okay, thanks. Hello, everybody. My name is Ken Bai. I'm from UT Austin, and my supervisor is Professor Robert Heath. Today, I want to introduce our work on analyzing uplink SINR in massive memory networks. Here, the basic question we want to answer is, say, um, if you have if you have 10 antenna serving 10, 10 antenna, sorry, if you have 100 antenna serving 10 users in a cell, and, and now we want to in, like increase the number of users we want to serve in a cell, say we want to serve 20 users, then how many antennas we should add accordingly when we want to keep the, the same SNR distribution or same quality of service as each user. The tool we use here is called stochastic geometry. The basic idea is to model the, distribu the distribution of uh, the base station users at a certain point in the process. Normally, point some point in the process, and use stochastic geometry, we can derive the SINR and the rate uh, distribution in closed form. And use the closed form expression, we can, we can obtain like a key performance insight of the cellular, cellular networks. For example, the, the, the skin law between different uh, key parameters, as I will discuss later. And um, massive map, uh, sorry, stochastic geometry has been applied to analyze uh, different uh, networks, like a heterogeneous network, million wave network, and the massive memory networks. Here we will show, here today we will use stochastic geometry to analyze the performance of uh, uplink massive memory networks. Uh, there are many prior work on analyzing performance of massive memory in the uplink. And um, uh, there are many paper on analyzing massive memory in small scale networks. Here, by small scale networks, we mean the network with a few base stations, and uh, often they assume like the user and the base station locations are fixed. For example, if you look at, look at their SINR expression, the, the, the SINR expression is conditioning on a fixed user and base station realizations. So if you want to uh, analyze or if, if you want to evaluate like the spatial average performance of the network, which, which take, which, which take which takes average over different uh, position UE uh, realizations, we need to do sim simulation. Also, uh, most, most work consider linear scale, linear scaling law between the number of users and number, number, number of antennas. And they show that if we cons they consider the condition SNR, which uh, with uh, fixed user locations, then linear scale, linear scaling, scaling law between the antenna and the user is, is su sufficient to uh, maintain the SNR. However, in our analysis, we will show which th this is not the case if we consider spatial average performance. Uh, Stochastic geometry has been applied to analyze the performance of multi-user memory, most likely with small-scale antennas. Here, we, we mean, for example, uh, eight antennas in two users in a cell. And uh, normally, they assume perfect CSI, and they, they did not consider like the, like, like the effect of parallel contamination. However, parallel contamination is shown to be the the mean limiting factor of mass memo when we have larger than our race. Also, if you look at this paper, there, in their result, like in their analytical result, uh, the computational complexity to compute, like say the SNR distribution, is, is a function of number of tenants. So if you directly apply their uh, result to evaluate the performance of mass memo, then the computation complexity will, will, will be very high. So they, this kind of work cannot be directly applied to analyze massive memo. Stochastic geometry has also been applied to analyze the asymptotic performance of massive memo when we have infinite number of tenants. But um, in our simulation, we show that uh, it requires more than 10,000 tenants to uh, even approach for the SNR distribution to approach the asymptotic limit. So it is very important to consider uh, or, or to analyze the performance of massive memo in the stochastic geometry, assuming there's finite the number of antennas. Um, here in our work, we propose a stochastic geometry framework to, for, for, to, to analyze large-scale massive memo network in the uplink. Uh, here, we consider the effect of pellet contamination, fractional power control, also special correlation between precision antennas. Here we fo focus on the performance of maximum ratio combining, but we also have some further results on zero forcing receiver, which is in the general version. And uh, we derived like a spatial average as a distribution in very simple form. And based on the uh, closed form expression, we derived like the, we show that uh, 
to maintain the same as an artitution per user, we need a super linear scaling law between the number of users and the tenants. We also use the numerical result to uh, examine the impact of fractional power control on the per user rate. Now I want to introduce the network topology in our work. Uh, uh, we, we consider precision have M tenants and uh, precision are distributed as a point on point process. And the uh, mobile stations or the users have only one antenna and are densely located in, 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 the, in the plane. And such that each, in each cell, a base station can always find the K users in its cell to schedule in one resource block. Here in the figure, uh, we only, uh, here, in, here in the figure, we show, we, we show the base station, uh, we, we, show, we show the base station by the black dot and the user by the red and the yellow dot. We show, for example, th in this figure, we show that uh, each, in each cell, the base station will serve two users. And we only draw the scheduled user uh, in this plot. Well, there, there will be many users in the cell which are not scheduled. And uh, one interesting thing to note is that if we, can, we, we assume the base station, like the black dot is a, a point zone point process, then the user process will say the red dot will not be a point zone. An uh, easy way to say that is, is uh, if the red dot is a point zone point process, then in each cell, the number of the red, red, red point will be uh, random, it will be random, but in, actually we fix the number of red points in each cell to be one. So this will br bring high correlations between points of the user point, uh, user, user locations. And the, and the, the, the non-PVP behavior of, of the user behavior, of the user location will make the uh, uh, analysis more intractable. Here, here we, we consider, uh, here we consider to model, the, there are many prior work to, uh, on how to model the, the non-PGP user locations. Um, here we consider to use a hard core Martin process, which is shown to be a good uh, approximation of the exact user distribution. And uh, for, the time, uh, for, uh, for, for, for the time limit, I will not de de uh, de introduce in the details on how we model the user locations. Uh, in the up, um, the the users will uh, the, in, in a massive memory network, uh, the channel estimation is performed in the uplink, where all the users, all the scheduled users, will send their pallets to the base station, and the base station uses the orthogonality of the pallet to have uh, an observation of the like the uh, of the desired link. Here, like the observation is is denoted by U. And then you can see like the, the observation is contaminated by the by by by, by a sum, and then this sum is from like the interference all the interference channels from the other side user using the same pallet, which we call pallet contamination. And uh, even even the uh, base station can do MMC channel estimator, and the uh, the, ch ch the the pallet contamination error will still remain after we do the MMC channel estimate. So uh, we, we needed to incorporate pallet contamination in our uh, uh, analysis. And for the uplink data transmission, the base station will use the channel estimation to do MRC combining. And this is the uh, SNR distribution, uh, oh, sorry, SNR expression for the uplink MR, MRC receiver, which we will analyze using silicon geometry. Here is how we model the propagation channel. Uh, basically, we consider the M antenna base station and one antenna at the user. So H is a M by one vector. And uh, beta, we consider a large scale pass loss and a small scale fading. Beta is for large scale pass loss. And we consider like a uh, log distance the pass loss model to compute the pass loss in, the, in, in a link. And then we also consider like a uh, uplink a fractional uplink of power control, where the user will adjust its uh, transmitted power uh, to compensate for a fraction, say, epsilon of the pass loss in, in the uplink. Uh, epsilon is a, is a number which we call the, like a fr fractional power control const uh, fr uh, parameter, and the epsilon is a parameter, is, is a constant between zero and one. And for small scale feeding, we consider correlated kernel and the uh, phi here is a covariance matrix of, of the small scale fading, where W is an IID Gaussian vector. And uh, in our analysis for simplicity, we consider like exponential, uh, exponential correlation model for to model the phi here. 
Uh, here in this slide, I want to show how our analysis for massive memo is different from prior work. See, prior work using cigar geometry to analyze the tensor work. Uh, this is the simplified uh, SNR fashion. As you can see, uh, certain interference terms uh, has certain interference term is the cross product by like up to four pass losses. And uh, what makes things worse is that uh, different uh, interference terms may have common pass loss uh, uh, terms, which make them correlated. So the correlation between different interference terms make the make make the analysis more tractable. In prior work of massive memo, normally the interference will only contain one term, and all the terms are uh, uh, independent. So uh, to analyze massive memo using stochastic geometry is more challenging. And to simplify our analysis, we make several approximations. First, we make we approximate certain terms in the cross product by their mean, and the sec second. We will assume certain terms, uh, say the out of cell interference, are independent, even though they may have they may contain the the like the common term, common pass loss terms. One thing to note is that uh, we only made the approximation with certain terms, which has a minor impact on the final XNR expression, and we do keep the correlation between the ter between some key terms. Like the intra intra cell interference, intra cell interference term, and we will show that uh, our estimation make a minor error in the final SNR computation. Here is our SNR distribution result. Uh, we consider two extreme cases. One case is uh, the epsilon, like the fractional power control uh, parameter is zero, which means we have more, no composition in the, in the uplink and we have no power control. And the SNR expression can be expressed in the following form. Uh, first of all, this is a uh, uh, very efficient uh, expression to compute, which only contains one integral. And uh, the secondly, the better, the better thing is that, uh, um, like the number of antenna k and number of uh, sorry, number of user k and number of antenna m only appears in the mu term, and the, the and the in order to keep the same SNR. Distribution, or in order to keep the value of this expression the same, we only need to keep uh, k. Uh, we only need to keep the constant, uh, the value of mu constant. So, so this is shows the scaling law to to maintain the SNR distribution, where m should scale with k to the alpha over two. Here, alpha is the pass loss exponent, which is uh, Generally larger than two, so this shows if we have no power control with M master receiver, we have super linear skin law between antenna M and and user K to maintain the SNR distribution. For another extreme case, where we have four power control, say the, the epsilon equals the, sorry, the epsilon equals one, we can show that I'm need to linear scaling with linear scale with K. To maintain the SNR distribution, for general epsilon, like general fractional power control, we also have the expression to compute the SNR distribution, and we show that uh, the M should scale with uh, k to a uh, exponent to maintain the SNR distribution. And we want to note that, that here, the exponent uh, alpha is all is always larger than one unless epsilon is equals one, which is the four power control case. So uh, here. We, we show that uh, to maintain the uh, uh, same SNR distribution uh, in, in uplink uh, massive memory network, we need a super linear scheme law between M and K. It's general fractional power control scheme. In this size, we want to sh we want to uh, verify our analytical result or uh, verify that uh, our uh, approximation is accurate. Here, the markers shows the Monte Carlo simulation and the, the, the line shows the SNR distribution, which is computed from our analytical result. We show that uh, with different parameters, the, the, the marker and the, and the lines ma ma uh, like, uh, match, match with each other very well. So this shows that uh, our approximation is almost accurate. Uh, this might be the slides that contain the most interesting result. 
here we want to show that our uh, our skin law derived from stochastic geometry will apply to other uh, Bayesian topologies, say hexagonal model, hexagonal Bayesian topology. Here in, we, we, we use a simulation to verify our uh, claim, uh, and uh, we use a 16 cell hexagonal model in our simulation, and uh, we use case one as the baseline model. In case one, we assume each position uh, each, each position will serve five users in one resource block in each cell, and the baseline has 32 antennas, and the, the SIR uh, distribution is shown in this curve. Now, if you want to serve more users, say 10 users in a cell, then how, how many antennas do we need to maintain the SIR distribution at each user? And then we use the skin law we derived from circular geometry to compute the Required number of antennas, and uh, we plot the SNR distribution. And uh, like uh, the when we use the skin law of uh, our skin law, like the SNR distribution of the case one and the case two, um, like uh, overlap with each other, which shows that uh, our skin law derived from circular geometry applies to hexagonal model. Uh, another thing to note that. Uh, uh, in this case, we only double the number of users, but we actually need uh, more than almost four times the antennas to maintain the same SNR at each user. We also tested our skin law with different uh, combination of parameters, and they all show a good match. So we claim that uh, our skin law derived from circuit geometry uh, will generally apply to uh, other uh, or hexagonal uh, topology of base stations. Last, we want to show the uh, rich result. Using our SNR distribution derived previously, we can compute the, the average achievable rate in, for each user. Here, we plot the, the rate uh, with different, um, with, with different uh, like, uh, uh, spatial correlation, and uh, the x-axis is, the, the x -axis is the for different uh, 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 fraction, fraction, fractional control power uh, uh, fraction and the y-axis is the achievable rate per user. And we see that uh, for different, uh, although the optimal power control fraction for different uh, spatial correlation might be different, but uh, it's generally around 0 0.5, which means higher power control will provide, uh, um, will provide like an uh, optimal uh, per user rate. Uh, just to conclude, uh, here we developed, uh, developed a stochastic geometry model to analyze the uplink massive memory performance uh, with finite number of antennas. In our analysis, we show that to, to maintain the same SNR distribution or to maintain the same QoS uh, quality, quality of service at each user, we need, we need to have a super linear skin law between the number of antennas and number of users. And uh, you use this uh, numerical result, we show that the optimal uh, composition fraction in power control to achieve the best uh, per user rate is 0.5 for MRC receivers. For future work, we, we want to extend the work to zero forcing receiver, to downlink analysis, and to massive memo in higher frequency, say, military massive memo. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm done with mine, but uh, I guess there should be another guy coming here.